when I got the phone call uh, about Cameron, I was in a meeting at work, and I instantly ran out of the room when I heard an ambulance has been called. When I got to the school, I went up to him and turned him towards me to, to comfort him, and he didn't recognize me. He wasn't there. It, was, it wasn't my son there. It was a blank face. I remember feeling, is today a day that is going to be very impactful for us, or could this just maybe be nothing? And when I walked into the hospital and saw Cameron sitting in that bed, I was instantly aware that this was not going to be nothing, that something was very wrong. He was having seizures. And then that one day, he had 14 seizures. From there, they did a CT scan and found a lesion and were transported to Children's Hospital. And so we sent Cameron in for brain surgery. The brain surgeon came in and he says, surgery went great, went better than we expected. We've got almost all of the tumor out. And we're, you know, it was, at first it was a relief. I don't know that there's anything that really prepares you to sit down and, and have one of the oncologists tell us your child has cancer, and it's a cancer that doesn't have great stats, and you have a couple of options. You can take him home and live out these next few months as best you can, or we can put him through some really harsh treatments that's gonna make him really, really sick, uh, and we don't know if it's gonna fix him or not. Glenn and I knew right there in that moment. We just looked at each other and, and said, no, sign us up, Cameron's a fighter. He'll wanna fight, and we're in. Like, whatever it takes, we'll try it. Cameron, prior to any of this, is an adventurer. Uh, he has a little warrior spirit. He was always physically active. He loved outdoors. He loved fishing with me. He loved hockey. He's just a faith-filled little guy, and he is a bit larger than life, and we always knew that about him. But this journey really helped us to see a lot more of that. And then the roller coaster begins of Sharon and Cameron living in hospital, Zach and I living here and trying to go visit and make the hospital our second home when we're not here. Nothing prepares you for that moment where a nurse walks in in literally like hazmat gear, holding this giant bag of chemicals and hangs it on his IV pole and says, this is your first bag of chemo, we need to hook it up. And I think, gosh, like you have to wear all that gear to protect yourself from a chemical that you're about to throw through my child repeatedly for the next six months. It was so shocking to me that that's how we're gonna fix this. His body didn't tolerate chemo that well, so he ended up on so many drugs to help prevent the vomiting that was so constant that he couldn't eat, he couldn't drink um, very quickly. We had to put a nose tube in for feeding, and Cameron didn't eat again really for a year. And we had a lot of hope that this medication would cure his cancer, and that's really what we were holding on to. Our treatment protocol ended in November of 2018. In January 2019, he was declared in remission. It was so exciting. Um, and we celebrated, tried to put life back together. It was supposed to be no more treatment. That was the big thing. It was a, a family home together. Um, we were on our Make-A-Wish trip. Uh, right near the end, there was pictures taken and we could see that the droop in his mouth was coming back, which was a sign of the cancer from before. And we were really concerned. And we, we had a feeling that it was back. He went from, from being able to walk to not walking at all in a matter of like 24 to 48 hours. It was a really, really quick and scary transition. They did a, another scan and a biopsy of another section of his brain, and, uh, and there it was. He had relapsed, and the cancer was growing in an inoperable part of his brain at this point. And that's when they, we were first told our first conversation of, this is terminal cancer, and we don't have any way to cure this. We have some things we might be able to throw at it to slow it down, maybe, but we have no more possibilities of cure on the table for you. 
No more trials, no more treatments that were viable for him. And that was hard, saying that we're, there's no more fight left. We were very intentional about making memories with Cameron and Zach for us, um, spending time together, just going and doing everything that we wanted to do with while we still could. And before it was too late. We knew that last Christmas would be our last Christmas. So it was really important for us to do that Christmas really well. And I just remember like him opening presents and he's, he was just so grateful, even though he could only open presents with one arm because his left arm was flaccid and wasn't working anymore. And but none of that stopped him. And that's what I'll always remember. Just very quickly de-escalated where mobility was harder. And when he woke up, he could still recognize us. There was still, he was still in there. And that was tough because there was no communicating. I can't even describe to you what that's like to hold your child as he literally takes his last breath. And to know that it didn't matter how hard we fought, that we still didn't get to keep him. I just let him always know that I loved him. I was so proud of who he was, how strong he was. He's inspired so many people. It's so important that you know the reality of childhood cancer. It's so important that people see the harshness of this. And not just for families like us that, that lose our children, but also for the kids that do survive and the lifetime of side effects and health issues that they deal with. We ran out of time to save Cameron, but we have such a great opportunity in front of us now to save other children diagnosed with rare cancers, to give those families hope and to give them the gift of, of a cure is so important. And we really need your support. And we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for everything that you can do to help this.